Welcome back inside the den. Hey, we got a good one for you today. With me, as always, is Chris Murray. Uh, Chris, just uh, your initial reactions to Nevada's selection to the NCAA tournament yesterday. Uh, I think it was a little bit tense. Uh, the Wolfpack was the third to last revealed team, and uh, you could kind of see as the selection show was going on, the Mountain West wasn't getting a lot of respect. Um, the first Mountain West team off the board was San Diego State as a fifth seed. That looked good. But then Boise State was put in a play-in game. Utah State got an eighth seed, and they won the Mountain West regular season. And then you look at Colorado State getting put in a play-in game. So I think – you kind of went into the day thinking, oh, there's no way Nevada's not in the field. But given there were only three teams left unrevealed and the Mountain West wasn't getting any respect, I think people might have been sweating it a little bit. But I think ultimately, you know, Nevada getting a 10 seed, that is underseeded. Uh, they probably should have been closer to a 7 seed. But I think the big thing is, okay, they're in the 7-10 uh, matchup in Salt Lake City, which is kind of almost like a home game. Um, and if they win their first round, they're not in the 8-9 and have to play a number one seed. So I think all in all, it's a pretty solid setup for the Wolfpack. I think Dayton's a tough matchup for Nevada. I know we'll get into Dayton and how good that team is. But, um, you know, if you're Nevada, it's a huge opportunity. You're favored by a point and a half. You're closer to home than Dayton is. Um, and if you do win your first round game, you get an Arizona team that's really, really good. But they've had a, a bunch of head-scratching losses throughout the season as well. So, um, you know, you just want this opportunity to be playing your best basketball and, and get a chance to win an NCAA tournament game. And, you know, I think Nevada's played really well since February. Obviously, that game against Colorado State didn't go very well. But, um, you know, this is a, a big chance for Nevada to go out there and, and prove that it uh, you know, deserves to be with the national elite. I mean, this team has been built over the last couple of years for this moment, and we'll see Thursday at, at 1.30 what it can do. Yeah, you never know on uh, come Selection Sunday. Uh, that you know, This time last year, they obviously were selected into the first four. Um, same kind of situation. Uh, you know, it was the last region to get picked on the selection show. I'm sure, you know, palms are sweaty throughout throughout, uh, throughout Nevada that year, and, and certainly this year because I, I was at Lawler and uh, – yeah, you could feel the tension in the air, like, oh, what's going to happen? Um, just seeing, you know, Boise State, Colorado State get those first four games. Um, you know, really, really shocking. Uh, and, you know, that quote, obviously, that's going around um, from Mark Few uh, that, that uh, you know, they got it's a real screw job that, that Boise State um, got the first four game. And uh, like you were telling me earlier, you know, Nevada was – right on the cusp of that at the you know the 37th team picked yeah Boise State was at 38th um so they could have very well been back in Dayton yeah um however luckily for them instead of being at Dayton they'll be playing against the Dayton Flyers I think that would have been a stomach punch if Nevada fell into a first four game I think the Wolfpack would have looked at its resume and say no way are we in a first four game no way are we one of the last four teams in the field uh via at large so I think the fact that they don't have to you know suffer that indignity and kind of take that um, you know, I guess emotional blow and turn around and play really quickly. Colorado State playing on Tuesday, Boise State playing on Wednesday. They don't have a lot of time um, to kind of sulk over things. I think that's really big for Nevada. I think they're going to have more fans there. I know, you know, Nevada didn't travel great to the Mountain West tournament, but this is a seven hour drive. Um, it's not very often you get a chance to see your team, you know, drive to and see an NCAA tournament game. So I think you'll see pretty good support from the Wolfpack faithful. I know Dayton has really good fans, but that's a pretty long fly away for them. So, um, yeah, I think it if you're Nevada, it's it's maybe not the seed that you wanted, but I think things are set up to have some success. Now, it's, it's, it's going to be a very difficult game. Right? Dayton has some very good players. This is a team that was ranked in the top 25 for much of the year. Um, you know, didn't end up winning the A-10, but, uh, you know, played really strong in non-conference. Um, I think they ended up going five and three all uh, against NCAA tournament teams. Now, a lot of those wins were against, um, you know, those automatic qualifiers, you know, 13, 14, 15 seeds. So maybe not the strongest resume compared to that of Nevada. But, um, you know, interesting enough you look at Nevada they had seven losses this year six of them were to NCAA tournament teams so the Wolfpack um, didn't really take any bad losses I think they're pretty well prepared for this game um, you know we could break down exactly what they have to do to beat Dayton but all in all when you're in the field Nevada's only done this 11 times it's only won six NCAA tournament games there's a chance to go out there and, and make history and maybe um, get some revenge for that 2006 loss at Salt Lake City when they were a number five seed lost to Montana now it's a different venue they're gonna be playing at the Delta Center where the Jazz play that game in 2006 against Montana was uh, at the home of the Utes, the Huntsman Center. So a little bit different there. But, um, you know, I think it's it's a great location. And if Nevada somehow does get into the Sweet 16, the West Region Finals down there at uh, Crypto Arena, mm -hmm. the old Staples Center where the Lakers play. So that would be a huge opportunity for locals to, to go and watch the Wolfpack if it does get, uh, you know, two wins this weekend. Certainly a good location. Yeah, you couldn't ask for a better uh, situation, uh, at least in this year's tournament because, hey, 
you know, there's Spokane and what was what was the next closest one? Um, yeah, yeah, it was just out west. It yeah. was just Spokane and Salt Lake City. Salt Lake, I mean, you yeah. had Omaha, you had Brooklyn, yeah. you had a, a number of like more west, uh, you know, but not a lot in the or east, but not a lot in the Midwest. So. Yeah, so an ideal situation for Nevada, nonetheless. Um, before we jump into the matchup, uh, the committee kind of like you know there were some reports that came out and said that they weren't too impressed with Mount, the Mountain West out of conference schedule. Now there was some some impressive uh, upsets throughout the auto conference, like Colorado State's over, win over Creighton, mm. uh, Nevada's win over TCU, who's in the field. Um, but largely, the committee said, "Hey, your the majority of your impressive wins are in conference." Um, what do you make of that? I, you look at the Mountain West, and they were certainly underseeded. I think the Mountain West deserved better. I don't think Boise State should be playing in a first four game because they went out and played the 26th hardest non-conference strength schedule. Uh, Colorado State, okay, you know, they weren't great in conference, but they went out and they played the 52nd hardest strength of schedule. In non-conference, they played St. Mary's. They played Washington. They played Creighton. They beat Colorado. Um, you know, so they, they tried. They did what you were hoping to do. You look at Nevada, what they did on the road, both in conference and then, you know, beating Washington on the road, beating T. TCU in a neutral site game, testing yourself against Drake in a neutral site game. Um, you know, they deserve better than a 10. You look at New Mexico, number 22 in the net rankings, and they got an 11 seed, and the committee said had they not won the Mountain West Tournament Championship game, they wouldn't have been in the field. Um, so you, clearly the selection committee is saying, we don't really trust you, Mountain West. And to some degree, it's valid, because you look at the Mountain West over the last decade since the current membership forum, only two programs have won NCAA tournament games, San Diego State and Nevada, and never in the last 10 years has two teams from the conference won a game in the same NCAA tournament. So I think what they're saying, in addition to maybe your non-conference wasn't as strong as you were hoping for, uh, you look at the Mountain West, 8 and 14 in quad one games in non-conference. Um, in addition to that, you have not done it at the NCAA tournament level, so we're not going to necessarily reward you. Now, this team, this conference is seventh in net, and they got six teams into the field, and four of those games are favored, and the two they're not are both by three and a half points or less. The highest underdog spread is Utah State, your conference champion, three and a half point underdog to TCU, which finished, uh, I think, ninth in the Big 12. So there are some opportunities, maybe it was six in the Big 12, but there are some opportunities to go and show, no, we deserve respect moving forward. Like, we can go out there and have multiple teams win NCAA tournament games. We can get a team or two to the Sweet 16. Obviously, San Diego State getting to the national title game last year, they got a lot of respect. They got a fifth seed. I think this selection committee in particular put a lot of stock into previous year results because Gonzaga getting a five seed was a little bit surprising. Their resume is not a five seed. Florida Atlantic getting in the 8-9 game is a little surprising. Their resume probably – wouldn't even put them in the tournament had they not got to the Final Four. So I think the selection committee did not have a lot of consistency. But what it has given the Mountain West is opportunity. There are six teams that have a realistic chance of winning a game if they go out and play good basketball this week. Um, so they got to start doing that and winning NCAA tournament games before they can truly be considered like a national conference. And given those six chances, that's already $12 million into the Mountain West over the six-year NCAA tournament cycle. And now it's a chance to go out there and, you know, maybe get six, seven, eight wins this next week and two and, and show that you deserve to be, you know, a national conference. And I think until they do better in the NCAA tournament, there's always going to be what maybe some Mountain West fans think is a little bit lack of respect or underseating. The op their opportunity obviously starts uh, in Dayton in the first four when, when Colorado State and Boise State um, respectively, you know, play, play their games. Um, but... We're here to talk about Nevada's matchup against the, the Dayton Flyers. Uh, they are out of the Atlantic 10. Um, their record, 24-7, and a perfect 15-0 at home, and 6-5 and on the road. Uh, that would suggest that uh, in neutral side games, uh, if my math is correct, they'd be 3-2. and two. Um, So that's probably more apt to, to like what you're looking at in the NCAA tournament game because hmm. it's not a true road contest. Um, both fans travel. However, we might see more Nevada fans than Dayton fans. I'd imagine it's hard to get from Ohio to Utah just with the connecting flights and whatnot. Um, but the tail of the tape, uh, Dayton, their offensive rating is 117.6. Uh, defensive rating, 104.3. So kind of tells me a, you know, a, a good offensive unit. Um, formidable, for sure. Uh, Nevada's offensive rating, on the other hand, is 115.3 and defensive rating 102.2. So slightly less than Dayton, um, just a couple points away from, from them, but a largely even matchup. 
I'd say on on the surface. Uh, another thing that set, st sticks out from from the stats is pace. The pace of play for for uh, Dayton, which measures you know possessions per game, is 63.3, which is lower uh, on on the scale. Com uh, with compare that to Nevada, they're at 65.6, so quite low. So that tells me both of these teams um, play at a slower pace of play. Mm -hmm. um, so where do you look at this matchup um, and and see like where Nevada can potentially you know. Yeah, find success. Well, first of all, so like if zero was easiest yeah. matchup and 10 was hardest matchup, I'd probably put Dayton as an eight. I think there are some yeah. things that Dayton does that could give Nevada some trouble. Uh, they have Jerron Holmes the third or the second, uh, not a junior, of uh, the second. Uh, and he is one of the nation's best players. He is a All-American, uh, maybe not first team, but certainly at least a second team All-American. Six foot nine center, third year at Dayton. He was a top 50 recruit coming out of high school. He's 20 and 10. He's three assists. He's two blocks. He can shoot threes. He can beat you down in the post. Um, he gets to the free throw line a lot. He doesn't foul a lot. Uh, he's going to be the best player on the court. Uh, unless Jared Lucas or Keenan Blackshear can rise their level of play. Like, he is a very, very good player. He is a future NBA player probably after this year. Um, the next thing that stands out is they're number three in the nation in three-point shooting, better than 40%. There are not a lot – there are almost – there are no good shooting teams from three in the Mountain West. Nevada is probably the best, and I wouldn't say that's like an elite three-point shooting team. So Nevada is going to be challenged at the three-point line unlike it's been this year. And number three – Dayton does not foul. They allowed the second fewest free throw attempts per game in the entire nation. And Nevada's offense is largely predicated on getting to the free throw line. So if they're not getting to the free throw line and getting those cheap points, that's going to make things difficult for Nevada offensively. So if Dayton's able to hit those three with a slower tempo, um, it's going to be hard for Nevada to match up with them, I think. Uh, but the thing that you can look at, okay, where does Nevada have the advantage? Dayton has the fourth worst defense, according to Ken Palm's numbers, among all NCAA tournament at-large teams. Uh, Kentucky, FAU, and Alabama are the only ones that are worse. So there are some vulnerabilities on the Dayton defense, specifically on the interior. Um, they don't necessarily defend the post that great, and they give up a lot of offensive rebounds. So I think Nick Davidson needs to have a big game. K.J. Himes needs to have a big game. Dayton is pretty young. They don't have any seniors listed in their rotation. Now, a couple of these guys are technically seniors, fourth or fifth year guys, who Dayton's just not counting their COVID year. But it's a fairly young team that doesn't have a lot of NCAA tournament experience. Um, they haven't had as much in terms of quality wins as Nevada has had. Nevada's shown maybe a little bit of a higher ceiling. So I think that plays in the Wolfpack's favor. Anthony Grant, their head coach, just one in three in NCAA tournament games all time. Now, his best team, he had a number one seed in that 2020 tournament that got wiped out because of COVID with Obi Toppin. Um, so, you know, he's had some really good teams before. Um, but, yeah, there are certainly things that Dayton does well that could match up with some Nevada weaknesses in terms of not fouling, uh, in terms of hitting a lot of threes, and in terms of having a really great post player. Um, and Nevada can sometimes struggle with some of the big guys. I think the Wolfpack is a much deeper team. If they can get Dayton into foul trouble, which has not been easy this year, Nevada's, you know, five, six, seven, eight guys are much better than Dayton's five, six, seven, eight guys. So I think the Wolfpack has the depth advantage. They have a better defense. They'll be playing closer to home. And I just think they've been a little bit more battle tested. The Mountain West is better than the A-10. So that's why it's such an even matchup. But I don't think it's an easy matchup for Nevada. They say matchups make games in the NCAA tournament. I do think this is a more difficult matchup for Nevada than it potentially could have been had they drawn a different team. Yeah, so going back on a couple of your points, uh, free throw attempts per game for Nevada, uh, 25. That's uh, in the 98th percentile of, of college basketball. Pretty good. Uh, but compare that to Dayton's like allowed free throw attempts per game, 12.9 to your that's point. Huge. That's, that's 13, huge. That's 13 free 13. throws difference. Yeah. So that's going to be a huge thing. Can Nevada yeah. get to the free throw line? And typically mm -hmm. NCAA tournament games, they let a little bit more physicality go. Um, they don't yeah. quite uh, call as many fouls. And I think that's why the Mountain West So what West you're saying, Chris, is not, they're not the Mountain West refs. Yeah. So, <laughs> that, I mean, that's a huge number to watch. If Nevada gets to 20 free throws, it probably wins this game. But if it's down in the low teens, like Nevada's not shot in the low teens for free throws all that often. Yeah. Uh, and – all the more reason that 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 stat, just fouls in general or in free throw attempts, will be relevant. If you look at the substantial minutes played by by the Dayton Flyers, they only run an eight man rotation typically. Mm. So if you get people in foul trouble, they're gonna have to run through some bodies and you know end up 
you know, pr- presumably gassed yeah. towards the end. Um, so yeah, Nevada's going to want to play their style of play, and and Lucas and and Blackshear are cer- certainly a huge component of that. But I'd watch out, obviously, because um, size wise, the only player i mean there's two players that can stick stick around with with homes it's uh you know kj himes and and nick davidson you know he's sick you know himes is 610 davidson 69 they match his size um but i could see himes you know get in foul trouble again we don't know how they're going to call it um if if he's not dealing with foul trouble then then good yeah um but yeah you got to certainly stick with homes but we can't uh you know uh devalue obviously another dayton player in nate santos He's also a really good player, averages 12 a game, um, you know, and, and a good three-point shooter. He shoots at a 42.7% clip. Um, compare that to Lucas, who shoots around 39%. Yeah, I mean, they've got four or yeah. five guys who can yeah. hit three-pointers. They shoot about, like, 24 three-pointers per game. That's almost half their shot attempts. So um, they have been a little bit turnover-prone. I think if Nevada can create some pressure, especially with a lower possession game, if this is what ends up being, because Dayton likes to play a little bit slower, if they're turning, you know, the Flyers over in, in a low-possession game, um, that could lead to some issues for Dayton as well. But I think a lot of it will come down to how does Dayton shoot the three-point ball. Obviously, it's a big stage. Not a lot of these guys played in the NCAA tournament. Uh, if they're able to hit 40% of their threes and they take their 24-25, that means they're making you know, a, a, a pretty good amount, almost 10 threes. Th- that's going to be trouble for Nevada. I, I think the Wolfpack – Based on what we saw with them shooting recently, um, you know, they probably can win like a high scoring game without the free throw line. But outside of that really like five game sample toward the end of the season, they were pretty reliant on getting to the free throw line Mm -hmm. to get up to the, you know, 75, 80 points. So, um, yeah, I think it's a fun matchup because it's it's two different styles. Nevada's more of a defensive oriented team. Dayton's more of an offensive oriented team. Dayton wants to slow it down. I think Nevada, they don't play at a huge pace, but I think they want Keenan Blackshear to get the ball and push it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Nevada's got the depth over Dayton, which is an advantage. But typically in the NCAA tournament, you're going to shrink your rotation anyway. Mm -hmm. You're going to play like your best seven guys. You're not giving your eighth and ninth guys a ton of minutes unless you get into foul trouble. Um, And, you know, I'm just curious to see how they do to try and defend uh, Holmes, because if Nick Davidson has to do that uh, because KJ gets into foul trouble and Nick gets into foul trouble, I think that's going to be big. I think Nick is going to be the X factor for this team in this game because of some of the vulnerabilities that Dayton has on the interior defending and the offensive rebounds. They give up like almost 12 offensive rebounds a game, which for as few possessions as they play, that's a lot. So um, I think there's a chance for Nevada to win this game, you know, on the backboard as well. Daniel Foster has shown that he's a pretty good offensive rebounder. Obviously, KJ, Nick Davidson, Keenan Blackshear is a really good rebounder for a point guard. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going to come down to who plays better because on paper, both these teams are roughly even. Uh, you look at net, you look at Ken Palm, um, you know, right around the same range, right around the same expectation. But Dayton has not been playing his best basketball of late. And, you know, obviously Nevada was playing really well into that loss against Colorado State. So I think in terms of, like, current form, Nevada has been better. Both these teams ended up losing in the their first game of their conference tournament. Um, Dayton losing to Duquesne, who ended up winning the A-10 conference. So uh, I think that could, you know, they'll, they'll be equally rested. And, you know, Nevada said that it had some flu issues with the Mountain West tournament. So that should be in the past as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's you can break it down as much as you want. I think it's going to come down to whether Dayton hits its three-pointers and whether Nevada can try and, you know, get to the free throw line but also put a little bit of pressure on that Dayton point guard situation and create some turnovers so they're not getting open looks. And, you know, because if, if they get open looks, history shows that they've hit them. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the biggest factors that at the NCAA tournament is the ability to, to knock down the, the three ball. Um, I'm sure we can talk about, like, kind of the years past and where Nevada found success in the NCAA tournament. Obviously, these are, these are different teams. Um, the most recent win, obviously, was was under Muss uh, during the Sweet 16 run in that win over Cincinnati. Um, with those teams, you know, you had, you had Kendall Stevens, Jazz Johnson, um, and the Martin Twins that can, can make threes. So, And it's highly useful in a, in a situation when you're, when you're down at the tournament to kind of claw back. Um, I think Nevada's style of play is one – that is which, like, they like to play ahead. And obviously, you might be like, oh, Jared, that, yeah, everyone wants to play ahead. Um, but they really are. I mean, they, they they just can, like, you know, jump out to the lead, and that's where they're comfortable playing. Uh, whereas when they're, they've been down in, in, in games, and specifically uh, against Colorado State, they just couldn't find that, fi- like, firepower to, like, 
claw back in mm. and potentially win a game. Um, but if they can find that five game form or six game form where they're knocking down at a high clip, um, then yeah, they have a good chance to, to knock off Dayton. Um, but if they come out and have a lackadaisical, uncharacteristic like um, performance like they had in the first half versus Colorado State, then you're probably looking at an early exit for, for Nevada. I don't think they want it to be like a shootout. I don't think yeah. they want it to be an offensive-oriented game. I will say if Dayton gets off to a fast start and hits some of those threes, I think it will be important for Nevada not to panic because Dayton has mm -hmm. given up some second-half leads over the second portion of the season because that defense is not elite. So, you know, if the Wolfpack either gets in foul trouble or they're down seven or eight at halftime, like they have to stay the course and not start – um, getting away from what makes them successful on offense, which is ball movement, which is trying to get the ball inside, get into the free throw line. Uh, like they can't just start triggering a bunch of threes to try and catch up because Dayton has shown that it doesn't necessarily protect leads in the second half as well as some teams. Um, you do look at Nevada's history, though. If they are down at halftime this year, I think they're like one in seven. So mm -hmm. um, that, that first opening period will be important. I mean, Coach Alford has talked so much about this team has been through everything now, so they should be prepared for all of these moments. They should have learned from last season. Um, they shouldn't be better prepared to play on the big stage. That obviously didn't show up in the game against Colorado State. Um, you know, they have had some struggles in the postseason under Coach Alford, just two and six if you include last year's NCAA tournament loss and then the five Mountain West tournaments. So, um, you know, this team, in terms of experience, is way more experienced than Dayton. They've played together in an NCAA tournament game. So you would think that would benefit Nevada, but you know we'll see how this team kind of plays on that big stage because other than Hunter McIntosh, nobody really showed up in last year's NCAA tournament. Now, like mm -hmm. you said, this is a different team. They're playing better. They're in better form. They're healthier. Um, you know, we'll see if Hunter McIntosh plays in this game. But even if he doesn't, Nevada still has like a, a solid seven, eight man rotation without him. Um, you know, we'll see if they feel more comfortable in this setting. And I think that's why this location is good for them because they should feel like they have a little bit more of a home home court advantage, a little bit more of a home crowd. But, um, you know, this is where you become legends. If you can go and make a Sweet 16, in Nevada history, there's two of them. It's 2004. It's 2018. The players on both those teams will be remembered in this community forever. Um, you know, the players on the current team have done a ton of great things for this program and got this community fully back and invested in the Nevada basketball. But actually going out there and winning an NCAA tournament game or two – would put this team and these players on a different level completely 10, 15, 20 years down the road because this is where the biggest memories are made. And, you know, we'll see if they can go out and, and make a memory in a game that they're, you know, favored. And, um, you know, it is interesting that the betting line is, you know, Nevada by one and a half. But if you look at, like, ESPN's BPI, um, Dayton basically has, like, a 60% chance of winning this game. Um, so some of the metrics favor Dayton. I do go back to just the, the level of competition that both these teams have beaten – Yes, a lot, a lot of Nevada's is against Mountain West competition, but the Wolfpack has beaten way more high-quality NCAA tournament teams than Dayton has. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that Dayton can't rise its game up and play at that level, but that is, like, one interesting thing that I've noted is that Dayton, um, you know, while their number of wins over NCAA tournament teams are pretty similar, the, the caliber of NCAA tournament teams Dayton has beaten is not near where Nevada's is. Certainly. Uh but one thing's for sure, it's going to be an interesting match matchup on Thursday. Um, that region of the bracket is interesting, like we said earlier. Um, if they win, presumably, they'd play Arizona. Um, now it's no guarantees. Uh, nothing seems to be a guarantee anymore in, in the NCAA tournament, obviously, throughout the years, with 16 seeds knocking off one seeds. Um, but it seems like an ideal uh, place to get, get put um, instead of, like, Utah State, where they got you know slated as an eight seed, because um, if they win, they play play the one seed in their uh, in their bracket, um, in, in their region rather. Um, but do you see a path for them to to potentially make a Sweet Sixteen? I mean, beating Arizona not gonna yeah. be easy. Arizona's yeah. like plus eleven on the glass. They've got a seven foot center who's a beast. Uh, they've got excellent size. They've got excellent coaching, excellent experience. Exactly um, the, the type of matchup you told me like that. You, Nevada doesn't want. It's to not see, a great right? matchup, yeah. but you know they've lost to USC. They've lost to Stanford. They've lost to Oregon State. Mm -hmm. They lost to FAU at home, and FAU's an NCAA tournament team, but haven't been great this year. They lost to Washington State at home. So they've had some hiccups along the way. If you want to, like, chart Nevada's path, if all of the top seeds hold, Nevada would have to beat first Dayton, then Arizona, uh, then probably Baylor, although New Mexico could be in that Sweet 16 game. If, that'd be interesting. if New Mexico keeps winning, yeah. that'd be fun. Uh, two Mountain West teams have never yeah. played each other in the uh, NCAA tournament. And then uh, after that, 
uh, North Carolina is the number one mm-hmm. seed in that tournament uh, mm-hmm. on the the West bracket. So who uh, just lost to the Wolfpack? By the uh, way. Yeah, the NC State Wolfpack. <laughs> so it's not easy. <laughs> um, you know, I think if you win one game, you can call this a a super successful season. Uh, we're still five years into Steve Alford's tenure with zero Mountain West championships, and I think that's a little bit disappointing. But if you go out and you win an NCAA tournament game, you can say everything that you were building toward um, came to fruition. You ended up being one of the 32 teams left standing. And if you can get to the Sweet 16, obviously, it's a, a rousing success. I think even if you lose this game, you've done a lot of really good things over the last two years to reestablish this program as one of the better ones in the Mountain West and one that can get to the NCAA tournament. Um, it's just a different uh, accomplishment to win an NCAA tournament game. And, and this is an opportunity to do it because this is a very winnable game. You're not going in as a huge underdog. In terms of then making a run after that, heck, I mean, win one game and, and see. But, yeah, Arizona is a, a very, very good team. Uh, they got Caleb Love, who's done a lot of great things at, at North Carolina before. Um, they got Keyshawn Johnson, who was at San Diego State last year when they made it all the way to the national title game. And then Omar, their big center, is, you know, he's a beast. So, mm-hmm. um Hopefully that matchup comes to fruition for Wolfpack fans and they get to see that game on Saturday. But, um, you know, I think beating Dayton is going to be a handful in itself. And, uh, you know, we'll see if Nevada's up to the task. Certainly a good matchup. We'll have a team out there in in Salt Lake City. So stick with us there. Um, before we go, Chris, you've had a load of experience at the NCAA tournament. You told me about the time in 2018 where you're scrambling across the nation following them. Just give, give me a favorite memory uh, of your time at the big dance. It's probably that game, just because yeah. of how um, special that run ended up being. I mean, Nevada should have lost to Texas, and then they come back and they win that thing in overtime after Jordan Caroline splits two free throws at the end of the game. If he misses that second free throw, Nevada ends up losing that game. Um, and then the game against Cincinnati, they just look dead in the water for about 25 minutes, and then they go on this huge run, and obviously Josh Hall making that shot. And the funny thing is, okay, now they've beaten two of the better teams. Now they get to play Loyola Chicago in the Sweet 16, and they should <laughs> win that game, right? Right. And they just gave up layup after layup after layup after layup, and they had a shot at the end of the game. But there was a stretch there where they, like, literally gave up, like, 12 made layups and 14 field goal attempts. Oof. So it's just unpredictable. I mean, Nevada could get blown out in the first round. They could make it to the Sweet 16, and you wouldn't really be shocked either way because mm-hmm. it's 40 minutes. And do you have someone step up and hit your shots? Um, you know, do you play that elite defense we know Nevada's capable of playing? There's so many potential outcomes, and it does come down to 18, 19, 20-year-olds for Nevada, 22, 23, 24-year-olds, which is probably good, you know, trying to deliver on the biggest stage with all of the pressure on you. So, um, yeah, it's always fun. I, I do find it interesting. Now, maybe this won't be the case in this game. NCAA tournament crowds tend to be pretty lackluster because mm. they're not, like, completely full. I mean, you get used to covering these home games with these great Mountain West yeah. atmospheres, and you get to an NCAA tournament game, and it just seems like, you know, there's fans from eight different places, and they're not always in the yeah. stadium when the game's being played. They, it only, doesn't, they really get into it towards the end of the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't yeah. really have, like, that uh, energy that you would normally expect for a national tournament. Right. But – uh, it'll be interesting to see how many Wolfpack fans make their way over there. Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, as a, a fan, obviously the NCAA tournament's like the greatest sporting event in the world. It's a little bit different yeah. covering it. Um, but just the unpredictability. Uh, nobody would have said FAU, Miami, and San Diego State in the Final Four last year. No, certainly not. So no one's saying Nevada in the Final Four this year. We'll see if that happens. We'll see. <laughs> uh, my national championship predict- prediction is uh, UConn over North Carolina. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the bracket well enough, but yeah, UConn's a pretty safe. Uh, it's bet. pretty safe. Yeah, That's any any game. analytics site you go so to. So if Houston's on the other side of the bracket, yeah. I'll say UConn Houston. Yes, maybe I'm. <laughs> I don't know where they're where they lie in the bracket. Maybe they're in the Final Four together. Who knows? But I'm picking UConn. Okay. Uh, not really a hot take, but yeah, just seeing how just analytics and just their style of play, it seems like. Uh, they might just run through it again. But so. they lost by 15 plus to Seton Hall and Creighton as well. So it's you fair. know Creighton's good. Seton Hall not not in the tournament you, again you never know you never know and can you you know if you're an underdog can you put pressure on the favorite team with 10 minutes to go let's say nevada gets past dayton can you put arizona in a situation where the game's tight with 10 minutes to go because a lot of favorites will just wilt under that pressure and you know they'll what they thought might have been a landslide ends up being a tight game and now will they actually be able to execute and perform <laughs>